What's up traders? In this video, I want to talk about why you can't just YOLO your entire account into a single position. Now, I know it's tempting, especially when we read the articles uh, or the social media posts about people that made huge gains on just one single thing that they put everything into, or at least a big chunk. There's also the infographics that talk about if you would have put your different stimulus checks into this particular cryptocurrency, you'd have half a million dollars by now. Well, I don't need to tell people, or hopefully don't, that this is subject to some selection bias. In other words, you're looking at something that happened to win every single case. But statistics tell us something differently. There is actually a way to determine what the optimum, not the best, but the optimum size of a position should be. And it's not as big as one might be tempted to. Now, we can get lucky every once in a while, but if we're going to be in this for a long term, if we're going to grow wealth, we need to know what is the best way, the optimum way for us to size our positions so that we don't blow out our account. Because once you don't have any chips, you no longer get to play poker. And the way to do that was formulated many years ago, and it's called the Kelly criteria. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So let's take a look at this. So the Kelly uh, criterion is why YOLO trading fails. In other words, why if you just bet everything or even a large chunk, you're not going to win in the long run. So what are the chances of us having really bad luck? We're going to keep things simple. Let's think about coin flips. So we all know how to flip a coin and we all know it can come out heads or tails. There's a 50-50 chance of it winning or losing. So what are the chances that we lose two in a row? Well, that's 25% or one in four. So we have a less likely chance of it happening than not, but it's still easy to take two losses in a row, even if you have a 50-50 odds. What about three in a row? Well, that's one in eight. Still can happen. It's rare, but it can happen. And as we go down the line, the probability decreases and if we get all the way down to six in a row, it may seem small, only a 1.56%. But think about it this way. That's one in 64 times. A lot of traders, if you're trading very actively, are taking over 100 trades a year. I know I take well over 100 trades a year. It's entirely possible, even with a very good win percentage, that you could have six losers in a row. And if you're betting a large percentage of your portfolio, let's say you bet you know, 10%, you can still be down 60% on that. So it can happen, even though it's a very small chance. But we have to account for that. So the question is, what should we bet? Well, the Kelly criterion is what lays out for us the probabilities and what we should do in our bet size. And so it's a formula that calculates the optimal, optimal because that's what's going to give us the best returns while minimizing the chance of blowing out our account and getting wrecked. So a little bit of history, because I like history. It was developed by a, not a trader, not a gambler, but by a technician that worked for AT&T back in the 50s. And he was doing this to figure out the best way to account for signal noise. But it was so effective and so transferable to gambling and investing that now it's become an accepted practice. And it's been mentioned many times even by investors like Warren Buffett. So, of course, it's going to become very popular in investing. So let's, again, keep things simple with a coin flip. And so we're going to ask the probability and the statistics, what should be our bet size for our optimal returns if we're flipping a coin? And we're going to make some assumptions. We're going to assume that every time we win, we're going to get a two to one payout. That's pretty good. If anyone came to you and asked, hey, do you want to take a two to one bet on a coin flip? Yes, you should. But how much should you bet each time? Let's look at the different possibilities. And we're going to do this by percent of capital rather than just a buck or two bucks. So the first we graphed out is... 1%. So if we risk 1%, we're starting at $100, by the way. We're not going to make that much. We're not even going to double our account. 1% is clearly not enough. 
if we go to 5%, now we're starting to make some better returns. A little bit more volatility, but better returns. What if we risk 25% per bet? Now we're making some good money. That is really good. That is a really good graph there at the end. It's very volatile. We got a little risky there at the beginning, but we didn't bankrupt ourselves. So let's go for a little more. What if we do 33%? Well, that's interesting that we bet more, but at the end of it, we actually didn't outperform 25%. So 33% is actually, even though we're betting more, we should win more, it's less optimal. Well, what if we bet half our account on each one? Well, very quickly, we bankrupt ourselves. We basically go down to 1% because we're risking 8%, so we're getting our bets smaller each time. But if we risk half our account, even on such a great 2 to 1, 50-50 bet, we're still going to go broke, and we don't want that. So 50% is not what we want. So how do we prove what the number is that we should use? Well, our return to the end, 1% was 27%, 5% was 200%, pretty good. And then 25% was 1,800% returns after 50 flips. There's that 33%. We actually got poorer returns, less returns. And at 50%, we bankrupted ourselves. So it should be somewhere around 25%. And sure enough, I bet we're going to get that. So here's what the formula is. And don't be intimidated by this. One of the reasons I made this video was because I watched a video by um, Nassim Taleb where he was explaining it, but he's a PhD, very educated, very deep teacher. And so he was going into very granular detail. I'm going to keep things simple. So the on the left side, we're looking for that percent. That's what we're looking for. And what we're going to do is we're going to take B, which is the payout reward to risk. In our example, it was two. And then very simply, P is the probability of winning and Q is the probability of losing. And then we're going to put this in an example. So in our example, we had uh, K is what we're looking for. We had our two to one. Of course, we got 50-50. So we two times 0.5, then minus 0.5, the probability of losing. And then we divide it again by our return, our payout odds. And so it tells us, it proves that 25% is the optimum percentage we should risk. So what about in a more trading example? Well, let's say that your payout over a long string of trades, because you keep logs, right? So you know this, right? You should. Your payout on average is about 2.4 if you look at all your trades. And you have a 42% win rate. So you're not even 50-50, but that doesn't matter. You've got a really good payout with 2.4. So we plug that in and we see that if we have this kind of a track record, we should be risking 17.8% on each trade. So that's pretty significant. You may not want to risk that, but that's what the Kelly criterion tells us would be optimal. Now, what if we are not that good at picking, but we get lucky. Let's say that we pick something and it gives us like a 20 to one, but we're only really right one in 10 times. We, we buy 10 different cryptocurrencies and one of them goes big. That's okay. But even with such a huge payout on one of them, if we're really bad at picking them, we still only want to risk 5.5% of our capitals, not as much as we might think. We may be tempted to put half our money into something if it's going to 20 to 1 or everything, but that's just not going to work on the long run. We just don't know what the future is going to bring. So we have to think in terms of our worst case scenario, and this helps us calculate that probability. So there's actually a way uh, that we can do this. If you just Google for a Kelly Criterion calculator, we can come up with a website or there should be multiple that can tell us. So here, you know, we started with our example, our two to one payout, starting with $1,000 and our probability was 50%. And so there it comes up with our 25% we should risk. So what happens if, let's say, we have a 60% probability? Do we need a 2 to 1? Well, what if we only make about 1.5? Let's see what that tells us. Okay, we can still risk 33% of our portfolio. What if we have the inverse? What if we work in a system where the odds of winning is still pretty high? Uh, a lot of people that, let's say they do uh, credit spreads or they sell 
premium. A lot of the times, they're going to have something like a 70% win rate. People love credit spread strategies because they win a lot. But oftentimes, what they end up getting is a inverse reward to risk. They only maybe get a one to four. So if we say we only get a payout of you know 25% for every dollar that we risk, let's calculate that. Even with a 70% chance of winning, well, that actually plugs in a negative number. And the negative number, if you graph it out, and I didn't want to get complicated there, a negative number means don't take that bet. It's just that simple. If we maybe have an 80% chance of winning, that actually comes out to zero. So we've actually hit the point where we should neither bet nor not bet. It's don't bet, in other words. That's really where you have no expectation of making money over the long run. You're going to probably break even or very close to bankrupting yourself. So you want to play with this within reason to know, well, should I take this bet or not? So I hope this gives you guys a little bit of peace when you read these things about how you should have maybe bet everything on uh, one particular thing. It's not the optimum way to size your portfolio bets. One of the key things to take away here is keep a track record of your trades. Know where you stand. And once you have that, you can then put it into these calculations and figure out what should I be betting. It could be more than you thought, or it could be less than you thought. And you find out that you've just been really lucky with a string of winners. So take all this and trade wisely. We'll see you in the next video.